Water, as you will know, is a, is a non-compressible matter, and and the force coming down is just uh, tremendous. So so mines can, depending on on uh, their, their their shape and uh, what they're made of, can float for for kilometers downstream. Uh, particularly plastic bodied mines can float uh, longer, and and, and that's a, that's a major uh, concern uh, now these days. The, the, the risk would be, uh, be worse when the, the water resides because debris will be covering uh, potentially the mines so you can't see them. Uh, so this is why um, we, we are extremely um, worried about you know, the, the situation. I should also say that many people think that a, uh, a mine that has been underwater is less likely to function. But the experience we have in the International Committee of the Red Cross shows that even even mines from uh, World War II that was laid in 1942 to 1945 uh, that have been under seawater for all this time, so more than 70 years, uh, are, are still capable of, of functioning. But what I wanted to say is that it's not only the numbers that, that presents the, 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 uh, the, the scale and, 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 and the challenge to the communities, but it's also what type of weapons that are there and, and how they have been, been put into the ground. Um, uh, we know that Ukraine is a society, a country, very much dependent on its agriculture sector, um, and therefore mines in the ground really inhibits people to return to their livelihoods, but also return to their occupation.